Did you know that less than a third of cases of a simple sore throat, also known as tonsillitis, are caused by a bacteria? And also, around 82% of tonsillitis cases will completely resolve by themselves within seven days without the need of any treatment. Hi, it's Dr. Derek here. I'd like to answer some burning questions about tonsillitis in today's video. So we'll talk about that white stuff at the back of your throat and the tonsils and what that's got to do with whether you need antibiotics or not. Secondly, we can talk about how you actually know whether you need antibiotics or not for this condition. And lastly, we can talk about what happens when tonsillitis gets really bad. So these are some of the complications. But first, I want to answer this question. Why shouldn't we just be able to have antibiotics whenever we want, even if we don't need them? Well, well, you have to consider this. Antibiotics are completely ineffective against viruses. So if you have a viral infection and you're taking antibiotics for this, you're taking medication that's not really targeted against the bug that's causing the infection in the first place. So you're taking medications that you don't need, therefore you're opening yourself up to all these side effects that you don't really need to go through. On top of all of this, we do know that inappropriate use of antibiotics increases the risk of antibiotic resistance Eventually, when you do need antibiotics, these antibiotics will be a lot less effective for you. So current data in the UK shows that in the year 2021, there were 148 new antibiotic resistant infections in the UK alone each day. It's a really serious problem. So let's answer the question. What is that white stuff at the back of the throat? And what has this got to do with whether I need antibiotics or not? Well, in order to answer this, I'd like you to picture the tonsils and think about what the tonsils actually do. So our tonsils form part of our immune system and they help us to fight against bugs. The way in which they do this with an infection is that they find these bugs and then they release a lot of white blood cells. Now these white blood cells attack the bugs. So you have this concoction of white blood cells, pus and dead bacteria or viruses. And when this occurs, you get this discharge of this white like substances, which you can see in the back of the throat. So doctors will refer to this white stuff as exudate. Now this exudate can be caused commonly by um, our bacteria, one that's known as Streptococcus, but it can also be caused by our viruses. For instance, Epstein-Barr virus and our adenoviruses. So you can see here that the exudate can be caused by both viruses and bacteria. So this exudate alone doesn't mean that you need antibiotics. There's other factors in play that will aid this decision on whether your sore throat is caused by a bacteria. So what are these other factors? In order to answer this question, I'd like to take you back to the 1980s, where a study was conducted on a group of patients in an emergency department that attended with a sore throat. So these patients had swabs taken and had investigations for the presence of streptococcal bacteria. And basically all the patients who had a positive test had the symptoms looked into and they were all grouped in themes. And basically the study looked at what the most common symptoms were that related to a bacterial throat infection. This led to something we call the central criteria. It's a group of criteria that basically show us how likely it is that your sore throat is caused by a bacterial infection. It looks at several things. For instance, the presence of a fever, also the presence of tonsillar enlargement or exudate on the tonsils. Also it looks at the absence of a cough and things such as swelling and pain of the lymph nodes around the neck. And also this criteria and the scoring criteria considers the patient's age. And each criteria is given a point. Patients that score more than four points are more likely to require antibiotics because their symptoms are more likely to be caused by a bacteria. So patients that need antibiotics are usually given a seven to 10 day course of antibiotics. An example being phenoxymethyl penicillin, if not penicillin allergic. And if patients don't need antibiotics, which is the vast majority of cases, we then suggest simple self-care. So keep a really good fluid intake, the use of lozenges, and also there's local anesthetic sprays that you can use to the back of the throat that can help to numb and cool that sensation of discomfort. All right, guys, so it's uh, 9 p.m. here. I've just finished a really busy shift. I had to send a 20-year-old female to A&E today. When she saw me, she had about a two-week history 
of a really sore throat and by the time she saw me her voice was muffled and when I looked into the back of her throat the thing that's dangling down the middle of the throat which you call the uvula I'll put a picture somewhere on the screen that was shifted onto one side as well as having a lot of pus on her tonsils her temperature was really high her pulse was high I was really really worried about her. So what I'm describing here is something known as a quincy. This is also known as a peritonsillar abscess. Sometimes you can get a pocket filled with pus that is between your tonsils and the wall of your throat and this pus and this buildup of all of this gunk can cause these symptoms that we can see in my patient here. And this is a major complication of bacterial tonsillitis and usually the patient is quite unwell like the patient I saw that evening. These patients will likely require hospital input because the tonsils would need to be actually drained. So all that pus in the tonsils would need to be drained. Now an important point to make is that a quincy or a peritonsillar abscess is quite a rare complication of tonsillitis and affects less than 1% of our patients. So I've answered some common questions that you may have about tonsillitis, but everything that I've said here won't truly make sense until you fully understand more about antibiotics and why it's so important that we're careful to only use antibiotics when they're actually required. So make sure you check this video, I'm gonna attach the video somewhere onto this screen, which will go into a lot more detail to give you this understanding. As always, if you found today's video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. And remember, I truly care about your health and I wish you the very best.